again I was prompted to put this one, this one on by seeing other contributions of electrical sockets, plugs and other auxiliary equipment. Now the ones I show here with the exception of that power board plug socket thing on the right are what I call vintage. We'll start with this item. I think a lot of you will know what it is. Give you a clue. In England, in bathrooms, it's a pull switch. It's a pull switch. In England, the law requires any switch within a bathroom has to be a cord, not just a normal wall switch. The fear is that people could, in fact, reach over in the bath and operate the wall switch. And if there happened to be a fault on the switch, the results would be quite spectacular. You'd probably be electrocuted. So what they do, they make sure the switch part is on the ceiling and the cord hangs down and the light is turned on and off by that. The other use for it is if you had a double or um, yeah, yeah, double switch where you have a, um, what they call them, yeah, a, a two-way, I'll get it right in a minute, two-way switch, which sometimes you have the switch on the wall in a bedroom and over the bed you'd have a cord. So you have the light to get into bed if you want to read or anything. You have the light if you wanted to turn in to go to Kip. You would pull the cord and the light would go off. Anyhow, the reason I picked this one up is it's an old one. Now, let's have a, a closer look. If you think it's like... I'm going to try and... We can see right inside there. I know it's awkward to see right inside, but it's it's really made up of a normal tumbler switch, the type that we used to use years ago. There's the little toggle, and the contacts are underneath. It makes and breaks. I wish I could show it a bit better, but there's the contact there that actually makes between the two. And as the switch goes over, if I make it work, that is. It's awkward holding this and it worked yesterday, but it just needs a little bit more. There, yeah, that's off. See the contacts in there, just that's off. The two wires would obviously go into the terminals there. Turn it, put it again and it makes contact. Now this is an old switch. I would think probably 40s, 50s. And it's what's called vitreous. Now this vitreous referred to the material that the base was made of. It's a porcelain or ceramic and it is shiny. It has been glazed. I'm afraid it's not giving it the light's not giving it very much effect, but that is actually glazed. And as you can see, the two holes where the thing would be screwed to the ceiling are intact. So often you get these where they've been smashed. Someone screwed them in too far and click, the porcelain just drops away. The two little, br the two little black things are where the centre, where the whole thing is, is screwed in and fixed. That's the other end of those screws where that little screw just showing on the bottom there and one on the other side and they're insulated with an insulating coating probably ceramic as well now this nice little item was made by a company called Tucker Tucker Telec made in England there's a little symbol there with their trademark. One of my subscribers um, showed a very old 
set of plugs, the wooden plugs, and there was a little uh, something at the back with a similar thing as that. Whether it was the same company, I don't know. But it definitely had vitreous, but that does refer, or did refer, to the base, the vitreous material. That's obviously the model number, I would say. Part 207. Funny enough, there's no voltage stamped on it, which is very unusual. Very unusual. Tucker and a couple of numbers, patented number, patent number at the top there. But it, as I say, it's very unusual to not have the voltage shown. Our stuff normally has the the voltage and the amperage. In America, they normally show the voltage and the wattage. If you look at one of the little Leverton sockets, that'll give the voltage. And funny enough, normally 230 or 250 volts, which is strange, but that's how, how they do it. Plus the wattage, either 250 watts or or whatever. Anyhow, leave that one. We now go across to the continent. We have a little a little Bakelite holder. It's a screw, it's a screw base holder, and it's one of the safety type where the metal part which you can see in there is isolated from where the current could be normally you'd wire these so the center contact was live or hot or active depending on what country you're in um, the outer would be the return or the neutral side but they brought this in at some time i don't know when it was where it was completely isolated, but there again, if someone w was going to put their finger in, they've only got to go in and, and touch on there, so the result will be the same. Now, very neat how you'd get in to wire it. I looked at it, I thought, well, there's no screws. There's the terminal screws, but how do you get the wires in to terminate it? There's no join or anywhere in that, that's solid plastic. So I looked at this, this is your switch. If you turn round, I think it can go either way, or can it? Some go only one way. The American stuff tends to go one way only. This one goes to and fro, so one way is on and the other way is off. Also notice there's something written on there which I hadn't noticed before. And I hadn't noticed that before. What's it say? I know one thing it doesn't say. It doesn't say, say made in China. This is too good a quality. Let's pull that out. Well done. I pulled the, the switch out. And now what happens? exposes the innards that's where that switch would go in and how it worked it would turn that little cam if you like round and contacts would be made as I'm holding this it can be difficult to actually show it happening but take my word for it that turns round and it makes contact one way switch it back the other and it disconnects it well made this is plastic There is names on it, but unfortunately my eyes are not as good as they used to be. Looks like DAF. And it's got 250 volt. Two. Ah, I know exactly where it came from. You look carefully, you'll see a D in a ring. It tells me it's German. Got a little ring with D in it. I'm trying to get it close so you can see it. Oh well, D. Uh, that is German. The German electrical stuff is normally a high quality as well. 
and that's may be the manufacturer DAI ah DAF ah. the mystery gets deeper that could be French I know they use France use that so let's put it like this it's either German or French or it's been passed for either Germany or French use it's one of their standards I think anyone out there that knows give us a shout Now, it's rather interesting to note, this item had the wires attached to it. We've got blue and black. Now, this was an old code used some years ago on the continent. We never used it in the, uh, the UK, but it was used on the continent. The black wire was in fact live or hot and the blue was neutral. Now with this harmonisation of the colour codes this wire would now become brown, blacks become brown and the blue remains blue. Right, our next item is quite a nippy, a very unusual item. I can pick it up on the surface of it, it looks just like a normal, what we would use over here as a 5 amp 2 pin plug. It's one of our standards that are no longer used, well I have said no longer used, if you buy electric toothbrushes or electric razors, that type of plug would be found on it. If you go across to the continent, it would look very very similar, but the pins would be thinner and further apart. In fact, the spacing on the Continental 2-pin is the same spacing as on our 5-amp 3-pin. So, you know, they're virtually interchangeable. I look at it carefully. It's made by a company called Presto, UK. The pins are not exactly round. It doesn't matter. It still makes contact in a normal 5-amp 2-pin plug. But let's see what happens. I'm going to twist this round. Note what's happening. The pins are vanishing. The pins have gone. And it becomes a BC lamp base. A bayonet cap lamp base. So you can either use it in a light socket or in a 2 pin 5 amp. This is old, probably wouldn't be allowed today, but it's a, an interesting item to show. This one also turned up at the same place. And what is also interesting, and now someone can confirm this because I just don't remember it, the wiring is white and black. Now in England I don't think we ever used white and black. We used red and we used red and black, or red and blue, with the earth wire being solid green. But as far as I know, we never use black and white. So, is anyone out there that can confirm this, or tell me I'm wrong that we did use it? I'd love to hear. Um, as I say, I know America uses white and black, and I think Japan does, but I don't think this country ever used it. It may have used it in some of the countries in Europe. I think the grey was re the white was replaced with a grey. But anyhow, it's an interesting thing. This is an, an adapter plug. There's your design numbers around the outside. Made in England, adapter plug. Presto, it's called. I'm going to speed up because, as I said, I've been on here quite long. This is just simply an adapter from your bayonet to the Edison screw and that screw uh, is in, insulated it shows it more clearly it's actually insulated if we went right inside there and touch that middle touch that side contact if it happened to be the live side you'd get a shock anyhow that's just an adapter which is handy if you've got a it's got made in England yes it's English there's a name in there I think it's Tunyon I've got to improve my lighting. 
can't always get this. I think it's made by a company called, it is, made by a company called Tunyon. It's a well-known British company of, of its day. You ha obviously can have it round the other way. You can have a screw base with a bayonet inside. I think I've shown one in, in the past. I think I showed a China one made by a company called Benjamin. Now, lastly, I make no apologies for putting this on. This is Chinese. This one is not too bad. When I say not too bad, it's fairly well made. A lot of these that you buy are darn right dangerous. I have known these where when you take the back off, the live and neutral are connected and the earth ain't. So the earth is just not doing anything at all. This one, I'm pleased to say, the earth is connected. It's also wired around the right way. And I'll be quite honest, I can't fault this one. But as I say, if you get these things, if you, if you go abroad to the Far East, China or somewhere, be careful. It's all right on sort of things that are not taking much power. But if you start plugging in three bar electric fires, take care. They're made to fit various plugs. The flat pin American, the Swiss and the Italian. That's what those two holes are in the middle. The UK plug. The Aussie plug, which I believe was first manufactured in England. Now, once again, I ask anyone out there any Australians, New Zealanders, to confirm if I am right, but I'm pretty sure it was used in England, not on the, the public electric supplies, but on low voltage DC supplies for bench work or, or anything like that, where the voltage had to be less. It's quite a neat plug, but uh, anyway, I, I put this in because there's someone out there that will know and um, once again, take care with these. On the whole, they're okay, but they do have them. And the other thing is sometimes the actual wire in the cable is almost like fused wire. It is that thin, particularly the earth wire. It might consist of about three or four strands. So, you know, be very careful. The other very important point is that I've actually come across these where the plug looks like a British 13 amp plug. It fits into a 13 amp plug, but it does not have a fuse. It is just straight through. There is not a fuse in sight. There's also not a fuse in the box either. So in theory, you could be plugged into a ring main circuit of 30 amps or even more, unprotected. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Any questions, please ask. Um, as I'm putting this in partly for interest and partly as a safety thing. So once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, please comment, please make questions. Thank you again. Thank you.